so let's apply some of these principles. We've already learned about articulation. Let's apply these now to some of the studies you, you would have had for this lesson. Well, the first study we're going to do now is from the Rubank method, and I'm going to play a little bit from the first two uh, measures of the rhythmic studies, number one. That particular stop to each note was done with just the tongue. I kept the air going constant. I didn't do any of this embouchure movement. It's simply the tongue. This is your reed and this is your tongue. The reed is vibrating. Your tongue stops the vibration and release. So it's da, da, da. Just a little bit touch of the tongue to the reed. I'll do that again. And I'd like you to observe your embouchure. It's a good idea to have a mirror. Make sure that there are no changes here. It should look just the same as if you were slurring it like this. The air is kept constant. There is still pressure uh, behind the tongue. When you stop the reed, the reed is vibrating here, the tongue stops it, there is still pressure. It's a bit like your water faucet in your house or your tap. When you turn it on, water comes out because there's already pressure behind it, but when you turn it off that valve, you shut it off, um, there's no water coming out. It's the same. Okay, so let's go on to the second example here. This is going to be a little bit different because every note is not stopped with the tongue, but now we have some rests introduced. And where you have time to round out the note, to make a slight sort of diminuendo and a nice resonant type ending to the note, you should do that. And this is done with the air supply stopping and the embouchure closing to keep the pitch from dropping, just as we've already illustrated with our experiments. So here's number two. see in my embouchure here if there's any change. But I am closing it off slightly at the end of those notes. You see it's important for us to master both types of endings to notes. The ending using the air and the embouchure, this sort of resonant ending to the note and then the ending stopping with the tongue. All right, let's look at one other study. Let's look at this uh, Weisenborn study, number three here, uh, appearing now on your, your screen. And in particular, I'm going to want us to look at measures five and six. This is the first time we've now had staccato eighth notes included here. And with these staccato eighth notes, we can play these with the two different endings. And in fact, I think it's good to practice these two different endings. Here in measure five, six, and I'll play seven and eight as well, uh, let me end the staccato notes with the air in the embouchure. So I'm actually stopping each note and rounding it out again uh, with, with a little bit with the embouchure closing. Now the other way I can stop the notes is with the tongue. This time I'm going to stop the notes with the tongue abruptly. So you're going to hear, the, hear it stop just immediately. Did you hear the, like the, how the ending was very squ much squared off on those eighth notes? Now, I can adjust the length of the note just by where I place the tongue on the reed. This time I'll, I'll make them very short, and then the next time I'll make them a little longer for you. Those were 
shorter notes. Now I'll lengthen them, but still stopping it with the tongue. Could you hear how those are longer? I kept the air supply going throughout the notes. Now those were with the more abrupt ending. I can also make short notes by placing the tongue on the reed a little bit more slowly and getting the effect of the resonant ending, however doing it with the tongue. Let me uh, illustrate this in just sort of slow motion for you. So for instance, let me play a note and make a tongued diminuendo. Yes, I'm making a diminuendo just by the rate at which I put the tongue on the reed. Can you hear how the, the note just closed off? That's just doing it with the tongue. You can do this at a faster motion, which is what I'll do now. Didn't do it as well as I Let me try it again. So you can, you can vary the speed at which the tongue goes on the notes. Let me give you a little study we can work on. I know this is a lot to do in the third lesson, but some of these principles can carry forward later. I'm giving you a little study here with just some eighth notes followed by eighth rests. Let's set the metronome for 80. And uh, what I want you to do is three different stops to the notes. First stop, we're going to do with the air and the embouchure. For each of those, I felt my, um, my stomachs or my abdominal muscles actually pulsing. Let's try that again. So there was a pulse to it. Now this time, for the tongued abrupt stop, we're going to use the tongue, but we're going to keep the air constant through the whole thing. So here's the tongue abrupt stop. I missed a note there. I wasn't too happy. Let's do that again. Each note was sort of chopped off at the end. Now I'm going to use the air constant through there, but the tongue less abrupt at the end. Could you hear that? Hear, hear those subtle little differences. It's important for you as a bassoonist to master these different techniques. It's not that one is right and one is wrong. They're all equally good in certain situations. Some are more appropriate for certain situations, other types of articulations for others. And you want to be the type of player who has freedom, who is able to choose from all of these different techniques. You don't want to be locked into just one type of articulation but you want to have varied articulations. This will give you the, the greatest variety, the greatest color to your playing. So that's a little exercise for you to practice. Practice it at, at some different tempos. Explore what your tongue can do on the reed. Explore also your air and embouchure releases so you discover your abilities and you continue to improve upon them. <laughs> Thank you.